Cute. Okay. All right. Um, hello and welcome to the Israel of God Jackson class. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, before we get started, so I don't make any mistakes, we'll have the reading of the law. Go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, mm -hmm. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord would not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Okay, now we'll go to Ecclesiastes 12 and hear the conclusion. Go ahead, 12 verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Mm -hmm. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go to the last chapter of the last book and hear what the Lord said about his commandments. Revelations 22, verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life mm -hmm. and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs... Mm -hmm and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Thank you. Uh, that was the reading of the law as we see that the commandments are here from beginning to way past our time. Um, so, but to di the title of today's lesson is called The Doctrine of Manifestation. And uh, the Lord calls me to put this lesson together because many people who come coming to me asking, what did Jesus mean when he made the statement, whatsoever you shall ask in my name? Can we just ask for everything, right? And so when I put it together, I start looking at what, what happened, what the apostles did, and what, what did Jesus say with that whole statement? Because we know a lot of people, a lot of us, we, just, we don't like to do a whole lot of reading. Just read the, what we need to know and keep going. So... But it's a whole doctrine based on this statement, right? And it's, they have made books called, you know, it's a doctrine called the law of attraction. It's in all, it's even in here, you know, it's in, it crept up in, uh, in some of the churches that we know that we teach this book, right? And you got all these books called the secret. That's one religious-based one. Think and grow rich, right? Right, where it talks about law of attraction. Put it in the ether. Put it in the air. All of that has been going on, and I've heard it here. And if you're on Clubhouse, it's real prevalent on there. And some of the brothers that go here and sisters that go here will be in those rooms. you right. So I start, uh, uh, the Lord starts showing me how most of the time this stuff is set up usually starts physical gain. But because then we get, we, you know, good Christians, we don't want to say physical gain. We want to say the spiritual gifts. Right? I want peace. I want wealth. Well, wealth doesn't mean wealth with money. It means wealth and well-being, right? 
right? All of that. Well, we really know it won't. You want to consume something on your lust, right? So the, that, that's the truth of the matter. But we have been heavily indoctrinated with this because of this statement. And uh, but the, the way we're going to start this, we're going to start with the premise of that doctrine and kind of show you what Jesus really meant, right? Did he mean that? And so we're going to put it on trial. Even my, I'm on trial here. Hey, well, maybe I'm wrong, right? Maybe I don't have it right, right? So I noticed two things that, you know, you have these affirmation rooms and these manifestation rooms and everybody's doing it. And then, they, you know, I'm affirming that I'm joy instead of just doing what you're supposed to do to have joy, right? And the Bible uh, clearly explains these things, but let's be fair and put it on the line, put it all together. So we're going to start off with the premise of their doctrine. Let's start in John 14, verse 12. As usual, I have a lot of ground to cover, so I don't have time to do a whole long monologue, right? So we get to go right to and let the Bible speak. So welcome home, welcome here to the Israel of God, Jackson, where our interpretation is expressly prohibited, right? We are not allowed to interpret. We have to teach the Bible. This is exactly what we do here at the Israel of God, right? So John 14, and we're going to read verses 12 through 14. John 14, verses 12 through 14. You ready? I'm going to go get this towel real quick because, as you all know from last time, I preach a sweat and <laughs> as soon as I start talking. So I want to be ready for that. You ready? Yes, sir. John 14, verses 12 through 14. You ready? Yes, Go sir. ahead. Verily, verily, I say unto you, mm -hmm. he that believe it on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Mm -hmm. And greater works than these shall he do, mm -hmm. because I go unto my Father. So wait, let's stop there really quick. It said greater works than these shall he do, right? So they even get that and say, well, you got to do the greater work. What's the greater work? We supposed, man, we supposed to be raising the dead up in here, healing the sick up in here, right? That's the greater works. We're not doing the greater works. But I did take a little math in all this education I went and paid for, right? And, and in there, I did learn, and now probably way more now than I have to, than I should even have to think about it. But when you have children, you got to go reteach them all this stuff. And so you got to cover things like greater than, equal to, and less than, right? This is less than, this is equal to, and this is greater than. Jesus said greater works, right? So we're going to check out some of these works and see how it is and see which ones are the greater works. Because they say raise the dead. But Jesus raised the dead. That sound like equal works. They don't sound like greater works, right? That's the same thing. Usually, last I checked, that's what equal means. Correct? So let's keep going, though. But they said, Jesus said they're going to do greater works. He told these to the apostles. So let's pay attention. Put some notes in. Pay attention because this will come to you. I don't want you to think that you exempt because you go here. This will come to you, and you could get sucked right on up in it. That's right, so let's pay attention, take your notes, be watching. That's like Jesus said, watch ye therefore, right? Watch and pray and pay attention to this. So he says, hey, they, they shall do greater works than these, and because I go unto my Father. Go ahead, verse 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, mm -hmm. that will I do, mm -hmm. that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Uh-huh. 14. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Uh-oh, Antoine. That's what it said. It don't look too good for me, does <laughs> Right? Because he said that you can't take that out of Jesus' mouth. He said, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Right? So let's go on to First Chronicles 4. And let's look at another piece of their doctrine. And this is not every little bit that they use, but it's enough, right? They use some other little portions in there too, but we're going to stick with these. Let's go to 1 Chronicles 4. They have made whole books about this little passage we're about to read. Now, we only read in 1 Chronicles 4, verses 9 and 10. We're not reading nothing else, but they have whole books about verses 10, really, verse 10. But 1 Chronicles 4, verses 9 and 10. You ready? Yes, sir. This is probably the only thing out of the Old Testament they read. They got books about it, though. You ready? 1 Chronicles 4. And I heard a brother in the Word say, mention this to me. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
First Chronicles 4, verse 9 and 10. Go ahead. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Mm -hmm. And his mother called his name Jabez, mm -hmm. saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. Right, keep going. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, mm -hmm. saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, uh -huh. and enlarge my coast, uh -huh. and that thine hand might be with me, mm -hmm. and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, mm -hmm. that it may not grieve me. Mm -hmm. And God granted him that which he requested. Okay. So now that they saw, and Jabez, Jabez a prophet, anything? Because the question came, hey, what are those prophets you ever seen ask for this? That? And they brought up Jabez. But Jabez is just a guy that asked the Lord to do what? Uh, he said, oh, that thou would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast. Uh-oh, enlarge his coast. What do you want? You Make him a big house. The, you don't know if his coast went from here to here. We, it, it doesn't say. All it said is that Jabez asked to enlarge his coast and that the hand of the Lord would be with him and that thou would keep me from evil. Right? They didn't really mention nothing about that. But it's about once the large coast came, up oh, we could ask for stuff. And now, what else happened with that? They got whole books about it. It's, I forgot the guy's name, but he got a book called The Prayer of Jabez. This is the only, I ain't, I ain't seen Jabez mentioned no more. Just right here. This is it, right? And they got a whole book, The Prayer of Jabez. You know what they say? Did you pray Jabez today? Oh, did you pray Jabez? I pray Jabez every day. I've been praying Jabez for 30 years now, and it has really enlightened me, Right? Because you made this same prayer. Forget Solomon's prayer, right? When the Lord, when he said, because you did not ask, forget that. Oh, I prayed your best today. And, they, and throughout all my life, I've seen the change, right? Okay. Let's go. Proverbs 23, 7 and a half. And if you read anything past that half, I, look, just don't do that, Okay. <laughs> I got you, brother. I don't know, Sally. He'd know if I got anybody, take your place, but I'll find somebody. But don't resist. Proverbs 23, 7 and a half. This is the la the, another piece of their doctrine, right? Proverbs 23, 7 and a half. Okay? So they don't read the rest of this. They don't read none of the other proverb, none of the other chapter in Proverbs, just 7 and a half. And there's a whole doctrine on this. Right? So they could take these things and build whole, not sermons, books upon books. Right? 23, 7 and a half. Go ahead. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's it. For as, you know, we've even said up here, as a man thinketh. Who as a man thinketh, so is he. And that ain't what he said. But he, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Right? So if you think you broke, you broke. If you think you rich, you rich. Right? When you got $5 out there. Right? <laughs> you know what's up with you. If you think broke, that's why you're broke. So all this time is because I've been thinking this way. It's the reason that I'm broke. Right? The reason is just if I just thought rich, I'd have been rich. Right? Okay. Is that what this is talking about? Now, I'm sure if you think certain things, you're going to behave a certain way. I'm not taking away from that. But what I am saying is that, is this what this is talking about? So that's why the whole book, Think and Grow Rich, and they have a book called As a Man Thinketh, mm. right? So, and they, as a man thinketh, see, if you thought that way, if you, and you can manifest your riches and all that, that's why it's called the doctrine of manifestation, because that's what they're saying. You can manifest it. So, the point, so I decided, okay, can these statements be taken at face value or do they need to be qualified? So let's look at things in the Bible and determine if statements have to be qualified or do you just take everything as it states and you don't do anything, any other research around. It. You just say, hey, I'm believing what it said, right? It said I could ask for anything. That mean anything. So what about when you ask and you didn't get? Mm. What did that mean? Oh, man, you ain't have enough faith. Well, a lot of people asked and didn't get. We're going to see if they have faith. Let's see. Moses asked and didn't get either, didn't he? That's right. Moses didn't have faith. What about Job? Could he have manifested himself out of that? Right? He couldn't have manifested. He could he have just said, as a man thinking, I think, I think I'm not itchy. <laughs> right? <laughs> 
and it's over with, right? No, that wasn't the case, was it? But let's go to Matthew 28 and verse 18. You mean Job didn't know about the prayer of Jabez? He didn't know he could just, let's see. Matthew 28 and verse 18. Matthew 28 and 18. Ready? We're going to see what we're discovering right here are, do statements need to be qualified or do you just take them at face value? Right? Matthew 28 and 18. You ready? Go ahead. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Mm -hmm. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father mm -hmm. and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Keep going. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded mm -hmm. you. And lo, I am always with you. Mm hmm even unto the end of the world. So he said, teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, right? So he tell them, do something, all the things that I've commanded you, and you're going to keep seeing, Jesus is going to keep mentioning what I've commanded you and these commandments. But he said, go ye therefore, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name and of the Holy Ghost, right? So let's go to Acts, the second chapter, and see, since he said this to the apostles, we got to look at what the apostles did. Since they're just the same way he said, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, he spoke that to the apostles, right? So we need to look at what they did and how they used it in order to understand this whole thing, right? So he said these words to the apostles. Let's see what happened. Let's go to Acts, the second chapter, and verse 36. Acts 2 and 36. Two and 36. Ready? So he told the apostles a, a direct order, right? All right, let's go. 36, go ahead. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely uh -huh. that God had made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, mm -hmm. men and brethren, what shall we do? So Peter is talking to all these guys that were against Jesus at the time, right? And he's talking to them and let them know, hey, y'all, the, the same Jesus that y'all had crucified, right, that y'all wanted Barabbas, hey, he's the one that's both Lord and Christ now, right? And so they got pricked in their heart. Hey, what should we do? We messed up here. What did he tell them? Go ahead. Then Peter said unto them, mm -hmm. repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. Hold up. Did, would, did Peter not have his listening ears on? Didn't Jesus give him a directive, right? He told him, baptize in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. What did Peter just do? What's wrong with Peter? He hard-headed, ain't he? Keep going. What did he say? Then Peter said unto them, mm -hmm. repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Mm -hmm. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, and so if you get baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin, you're going to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Pay attention to that. Keep reading. Go ahead. For the promise is, is unto you and to your children mm -hmm. and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Uh -huh. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. So look at who Peter is preaching to. All these people that didn't want to have nothing to do with Jesus, the ones that said, give us Barabbas, he's preaching to them. What about these being the greater works? Remember we read about those greater works that shall he do? These, these are all the people Jesus didn't convert. These are the ones that Peter and them were converting, right? So he told them, hey, but, but back to the point of this subject is, Hey, does, do things got to be qualified? Evidently, they do, right? Because he didn't say in the name, be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost for remission of sin, did he? What did he say? In the name of Jesus. You had to go find out what the apostles did so you would know what you're supposed to do. But let's keep on going. Let's look at another example of a statement that needs to be qualified. And this kind of goes on with the rest of their doctrine, too. The same ones that teach manifestation, they teach this, too. Let's go to 2 Timothy 1. We're going to read another one verse. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. 2 Timothy 1 and 7.
They'll take this along with the, hey, ask whatever you want. You always, because you, you got to come with this too, right? 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7. Let's look at that. Go ahead. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, mm -hmm. but of power and of love and of a sound mind. See that? So now you don't come to the Lord with fear. You ask what you want boldly, and he didn't give you the spirit of fear, but he gave a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. Let's see if that got to be qualified. Let's link it up with, with something else they use, too. Let's go to 1 John 4. First John 4. See, wherever you see fear, you're supposed to put love, right? Mm. So he didn't give us the spirit of fear. He gave us the spirit of a power, love, and a sound mind, right? Which I agree with Paul, but you got to qualify the statement. Let's go to First John 4, though. Let's see what it said. 4, verses 7 and 8. 4, 7 and 8. Go ahead. Beloved, mm -hmm. let us love one another, for love is of God, mm -hmm. and everyone that loveth is born of God, mm -hmm. and knoweth God. Mm -hmm. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. For God is love. See, you go ask what you want, because God is love, and if he love, he'll give you whatever you want, right? And he didn't give us no spirit of fear, but the power of love and a sound mind. Now, let's break down what Paul was actually saying, right? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. Let's see if this statement should be qualified as well. Because it seems like that people like to make a lot of loose statements here and read mm -hmm. one thing and have a whole doctrine based on it. Let's see if that's the case. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. 7 and 1. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. Right? You ready? Go ahead. Having therefore these promises, mm -hmm. dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, mm -hmm. perfecting holiness in the fear of God. In the what? Fear of God. In the fear of God. So what is Paul talking about? Is he double talking? One minute he tell you don't have the spirit of fear. Next, he telling you in the fear of God, what he's telling you is, is that you fear God and not man. Amen. You know, Lord, didn't give us the spirit of fear, right? A fear of what you can do to me, right? So, and if, if, and if, I'm, and if I'm wrong, let's see if Jesus clarifies this statement. Let's go to Luke 12. So this is what they're looking at. They take that one thing and act like, hey, it doesn't need to be qualified. We could just say, we could just read this one verse and follow that. But we see it's something totally different going on here. Let's look at Luke 12, 4. Luke 12 and 4. Let's let Jesus, we're going to read 4 and 5. Let Jesus qualify it clearly, right? Luke 12, 4 and 5. You ready? Go ahead. And I say unto you, my friends, mm -hmm. be not afraid of them that kill the body. Mm -hmm. And after that, have no more that they can do. Uh -huh. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Whom you shall what? Fear. Fear. Whom you shall love. Fear. No, whom you shall fear. He said, hey, don't be afraid. Who you, whom shall you not fear? It says, be not afraid of them that can kill the body. Right? That's letting you know whom you shall not fear. So when Paul said God didn't give us the spirit of fear, he's talking about these ones that Jesus said whom you shall not fear, the ones that could just do to the body. But I'm going to warn you who you shall fear, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Fear him, uh -huh. which after he had killed had power to cast into hell. Uh -huh. Yeah, I say unto you, fear him. Fear him, right? See how statements got to be qualified that you just can't re read something and say, oh, anything you ask, let's just get that, right? Because I never once seen apostle or prophet say, steak dinner, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Have you? I never read it. I mean, if I'm wrong, hey, let me know. I never read what it, oh, big house, right? I didn't see it. But so what happened? They didn't know about your past. They didn't know they could have just said, enlarge my coast. 
And you know, right, I don't get it. I'm just trying to figure out because, you know, when, when uh, what was the prophet that got sent to the woman and then all she had was the little cruise of oil? Was that Eli Elisha? Yeah. Elisha, he got sent there. Why he didn't say big house, fish with the oil? He just said, make me a little cake, right? What happened then? They don't know. Let's see. Let's see what happened. Let's go to Acts 3, right? Let's go to Acts, and, and we're going to look at some examples of what the apostle asked for and how the, the, uh, the works that they did in the name of Jesus. Acts 3. Since he was the one that they said, since they were the ones that he said it to, we should at least go to him, go to them and see what they did, right? Since he made the statement to them, right? Acts 3, and we're going to start at verse 1. Acts 3. Verse 1. You ready? Go ahead. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, mm -hmm. being the ninth hour. Mm -hmm. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, mm -hmm. to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. So a man is laying there lame, and he's asking, just like we've seen before, but this is temple called Beautiful, and he's laying there every time somebody come through, they, he asks some form. We've seen that before. Sometimes I've seen it where, I mean, I could go through, and when I, he asked me on the way in, he asked me on the way out, right? <laughs> like he didn't even remember who I was. So he, everybody that come through, he asking an arm, right? But I want you to pay attention to what goes on here. Keep reading, verse, verse uh, 3. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asking arms. Mm -hmm. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. Uh -huh. So soon as Peter see him, he say, look on us, right? Let, now, what, did, did it say what Peter and John was together thinking, you know what? We're going to, uh, we're going to do a miracle today, right? We're going to raise some dead today. They, they didn't manifest that. They just being used as God's tools. And as soon as they see this guy and he asking them, Peter says, look on us, right? Go ahead. And he gave heed unto them, mm -hmm. expecting to receive something of them. So when he said, look on me, hey, man, you got something for me, right? But let's check out what happens. Go ahead. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Hold up. I'm sorry for being so tedious with this interruption. Peter, them didn't pray to pass. They ain't had no silver and gold. Mm -mm. They didn't know to say, wait, Jesus told them directly whatever you should ask. You ain't going to ask no look gold for yourself. They didn't have nothing. He said, silver and gold have I none. But what you got for me? Go ahead. But such as I have give, I thee. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Uh, keep going. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Uh -huh. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Uh, keep going. And he leaping up stood and walked. And entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And doing what? Praising God. Asking arms. Praising God. His whole mind has changed now. What happened? Why he ain't say, hey, man, you still got some money for me? They ain't asking the arms no more. Mm -hmm. This guy's leaping, walking, and praising God. But let's see what else is happening. Verse 9, go ahead. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Who saw him? All the people saw him walking and praising God. Right? Let's see what's happening. Verse 12, go ahead. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, mm -hmm. why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? As though, as, as thou by our own power of holiness we had made this man to walk? It ain't my power. I ain't manifesting nothing. Right? He said, why you looking on us? Why you marveling at us, man, like it's, this is me doing something? I ain't doing nothing. Hey, I'm doing what the Lord told me. He said I was going to do works and greater works than these, right? right? But Jesus made people walk. So as we speak, we still talking equal works here. But he's letting the apostles do the same thing. He said they're going to do this and greater works, right? right? So now the people see this man who they know was lame, right? Because they seen him out there all the time. So he wasn't faking. But now Peter and them say, look on us, now this man is walking. Let's see what else is going on. Keep going. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, mm -hmm. had glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up 
and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Uh-huh, keep reading. But ye denied the Holy One and the just mm -hmm. and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. So again, who is Peter talking to again? People who don't, who wasn't riding with Jesus. He is now converting the ones Jesus didn't convert. That sounds like greater works, don't it? You, he getting out and getting all the people that wasn't coming in this thing. So they come to us and say, hey, why y'all not uh, uh, making the lame walk and, and do all this right up here in the Israel of God? You know, but you know what we are doing? Guess what? We got churches in Africa. We got South Africa. The word is going out. So if I heal you now, you still could go out there and, and get hit by a car, break your leg again. Right? That's right. But the greater works, even if you break your leg or even if you went out there and you died, guess what? You got healed here. You get to get resurrected. So if, even if, if you raise the dead right here, they could die again. But we're going to see it. We're not going to get a whole thing away. Where we at? We just finished up verse 14. Verse 14, okay. So he said, hey, now you see in all the presence of these non-believers, these people who didn't believe in Jesus, they now starting to believe. When Jesus was here, they didn't believe. But now the apostles out here doing greater works, right? Let's keep going. Where we at? Verse 14. 16. Yeah, we finished All right, 14. let's go to 16. Go ahead. And his name through faith and his name hath made this man strong, mm -hmm. whom ye see and know. Uh-huh. Yeah. The faith which is by him had given him this perfect sound is in the presence of you all. So he, the, uh, the Peter's putting it out there. Hey, you knew this man was lame. You knew that he couldn't walk and there wasn't no faking about it. But in the name of Jesus, it's not by me. But it, he said in my name they're going to do these things. So by the name of Jesus, the, the reason this man is walking. Let's, let's skip on down to 19. Go ahead. Repent ye therefore. And be converted, uh -huh. that your sins may be blotted out, uh -huh. when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Also, repent ye therefore, and be converted, so your sins can be blotted out when the Lord returns. So he, just like he told them in the chapter before we just read, save yourself from this untoward generation. All these people, he's converting to everlasting life. Pay attention to these greater works that they so-called. See, a lot of times we missing the boat because you're looking at the stuff. Everybody wants the stuff. That's why with the speaking in tongues thing, that's where they get that from, right? They looking at the tongue speaking, ain't looking at the word of God being preached. It said they were speaking the wonderful works of God. So why are you so worried about what language it was in? You don't understand it anyway, right? Like a guy, we was on club, I was doing the lesson. He said, he said something, he was speaking some language that, you know, and, and that happens. They get to speaking. He said it sounded Arabic or something. Well, you know, you got Josh in Birmingham. This dude can speak anything. He must have threw some Arabic out there real quick. The guy didn't even know what he said. Like, I thought you were speaking Arabic. Yeah, but whatever he was speaking, he didn't understand it. I see, he said it happened to me just like it happened to apostles. I said, excuse me, I'm sorry, sir. That's a little bit different. Somebody knew what they were saying because it said they were speaking the wonderful works of God. So how I know you're speaking the wonderful works of God if I don't understand what you're saying? Somebody had to understand what they were saying. So no, that's not the same thing because nobody understood what you were saying. So be aware of that. They love to uh, use that part of the scripture where it said that somebody started speaking in tongues, but... And it, but it'll say what they started speaking. It'll say they start speaking about God. Well, the only way somebody knew that they were speaking about God if somebody understood it. That's right, bro. So be aware. Like I said, it's going to come in all forms of fashion. But people love looking at the stuff. The stuff is what gets, ooh, they raised the dead. Ooh, they healed somebody right there. That was really mean that they serving God. Let's see. Keep, let's keep going. Let's go to Acts 5. And you notice these apostles, how many are using this stuff for themselves? I haven't seen them look, use it for themselves yet. So when you talk about ask what you will and you're going to get it for yourself, um, I really need this house or whatever. When you're talking all that, the Lord, I ain't seen none of them use this for themselves yet, but we're not done. So maybe we'll see it later. Acts 5, and we're going to start at verse 1. You ready? Go ahead. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold mm -hmm. a possession mm -hmm. and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Mm -hmm. But Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Hold up. What Peter say? 
Why had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? To the Holy Ghost. No, but he said, hey, man, pay attention to that. He said, why did Satan fill your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? So when he said that, he said, hey, man, why did Satan fill your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Go ahead, finish that. And to keep back part of the price of the land. Uh-huh. Why has it remained? Was it not thine own? Mm -hmm. And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? So look, so the apostles doing things like people should do. Hey, they made all things common because this salvation is coming. Everything we got, we're supposed to be giving it. Right? So that's why they wasn't sitting around and thinking about uh, whatever they should ask for themselves because this salvation is common. It's for everybody. So when this guy, they were doing it, when they were putting all the money together, this guy decided, oh, man, I didn't know I was going to get that much for it. Mm -hmm. Right? Or whatever him and his wife decided. And then they decided to keep back part of the price. Well, he came. Hey, that uh, uh, Peter asked him, hey, man, what what? What filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost, right? Say, why you had it, it was yours. You didn't have to pledge nothing. You could have kept all the money, and it wouldn't have been no big deal, right? But he said, hey, was it, was it not in thine own power? Go ahead. Why hast thou, go ahead, verse 4, middle of 4. Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Uh-huh. Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. God. Hey, man, you lied to God. Peter not God, is he? No. Right? Keep going, verse 5. And, I, and Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. Now, right there, I know some of us want to do that miracle, right? We want to manifest that one, right? I know sometimes somebody, oh, man, you know what? <laughs> I, all of us want to get a little of that one, right? Is that, is that, is that the greater works? That we could, we could at, at the drop of our a hat, we could have, hey, man, you gone, right? <laughs> Let's see. Let's see, right? So, and gave up the ghost, and right, what happened? Read the rest of verse 5. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. What happened? Great fear came on all them that heard these things, right? Didn't, he, didn't Jesus just tell you who you should fear? That's right. Right? So now that people start to hear this word and get converted, every time this something is done, hey, somebody else is changing. So when they heard what happened to Ananias, great fear came upon them. But let's see what else happened. Where are we? Verse 6. Uh, uh, skip to verse 8. Go ahead. And Peter answered unto her, tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. So now his wife came in. And Peter just asked a simple question. Hey, this is not entrapment, right? Just tell me whether you sold it for so much. And what she say? And she said, yeah, for so much. Uh-huh. Then Peter said unto her, uh-huh. How is it that ye agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Tempt who? The spirit of the, the Lord. The spirit of the Lord. Why is Peter making these claims like that? We're going to find out. But he said, hey, so keep them keep a, a out there, like put something in your notes. Why did Peter say the Holy Ghost and the spirit of the Lord, right? So, but she said, hey, yeah, for so much. So I tell you, sisters, you're supposed to ride with your husband. That's according to the book until he go against your real husband. Once he step outside of this book, uh-uh, I ain't riding with you, right? Because soon he, she, she rolled with it and was like, yeah, for so much, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, why have y'all agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord, right? Go and finish that. Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. So y'all would love some of that one, right? You get two, right? You could just, at, just drop a hat, two people bothering you. And you can get rid of them just like that. Ain't that a greater work? It's kind of, you kind of would want to do that one, right? All right. But let's see what happens. What is the Lord doing? This? Why is the Lord allowing Peter to do this, right? Verse 11, go ahead. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. What happened? Great fear. Now people starting to fear the Lord. Fear the Lord is what? The beginning of what? Of wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. Fear. So now people starting to get wise, starting to wise up. You know how like people tell you about somebody you messing with. Hey man, you better wise up. You know this God is still in the killing business, as we see, right? Yeah. Keep going. Verse twelve. Mm -hmm. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Mm -hmm. And they, and they were with all one accord in Solomon's porch. Uh huh. And the, and the rest durst no man join himself to them, 
but the people magnified them. Mm, keep going. And believers were the more added to the Lord. Multitudes, both of men and women. What happened? As they were doing all these miracles, what was going on? Believers were added. These are the greater works. You worried about the miracles, but that's not the greater work. The greater work is the believers being added. So as they doing all these miracles, more and more believers being added, and more and more fear of the Lord is being happen it's happening. See, because see, when you don't fear the Lord, you ain't going to truly believe. You're not going to believe that he going to do exactly what he say he going to do, whether good or bad. Right? Let's keep going. Go ahead. And so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets mm -hmm. and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Now, well, look at what's happening. So remember, Peter's the same dude when, G when he's got a chance to walk on water. He started falling, right? Mm -hmm. Once he started, his belief started. Now he passing by and just a shadow healing people, telling people, just look on me and you can be healed, right? Mm -hmm. He is really believing. His faith has increased, but didn't Jesus tell him that? He said, when you be converted, com strengthen your brother. So now Peter's being converted in his mind. He really is having faith in the Lord and ain't none of this stuff for himself. He is just doing it because it's as it's being, as it's needed. Not, ooh, I'm going to go out and heal five people today. Right? I can heal anybody. No, he said, this is it by the name of Jesus. I'm doing it so all these people could do what? Be converted. But let's keep going. Where we at? Verse 16. Uh... Uh, we just finished that, finish it. Yeah. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, uh -huh. bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. So look, multitudes are now coming, right? Even more and more people. Remember, now Jesus is gone. But look at all these people still coming, and he healing sick folks and, and uh, people with unclean spirits. But let's keep going, right? Let's go to Acts 9. He's doing all this to convert these non-believers. Non-believers need, the, need to see these signs. Not believers, right? Like I say, this brother right here, he read for me. He can levitate, go all the way to Chicago, and then get on Zoom and start reading for me right there. And I'll sit here, be sitting here saying, let's go. <laughs> go ahead and read. Wouldn't bother me at all. Why? So what he levitated? Is that eternal life? But people look at those David Blaine and all them doing, he did this. So what? Whether he levitated on strings or did it by some power, it don't matter to me. Whether it was good power, whether it was holy power or unholy, it don't matter to me. Why? Because it's about either way it go. When the, when the dust settles, what I got to still do? Keep these commandments. Right, that's right. Regardless of what happened there, I still got to do this. My, 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 uh, my goal is still the same. My mission is still the same. It doesn't change because you saw some miracle. But miracles, we're going to see. They to help convert the ones that don't believe. I already believe. We already supposed to already be believing here. Why you need some manifestation to get you to believe? To get you to believe that God is real. That's what he kept saying to Israel. How long ere before they believed me, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go to Acts 9 and 32. Acts 9 and 32. You ready? Go ahead. And it came to pass, as Peter passed throughout all quarters, mm -hmm. he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydda. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, mm -hmm. which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. Mm -hmm. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he rose immediately. So you see Peter still out here. He able to heal the sick, right? Let's keep going, though. Go ahead, 35. And all that dwelt at Lydda and Saron saw him mm -hmm. and turned to the Lord. Mm -hmm. now, there was, now there was at So Jock what happened after he did it? All, that, the Lord. all them people turn to the Lord. We keep seeing the same pattern, don't we? But keep going, 36. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, mm -hmm. which, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed, 
they laid her in the upper chamber. So now Tabitha, who's also called Dorcas, right? Uh, she died. So now let's see what happened, right? Go ahead. And for as much as Lydda was nigh to Joppa. So Peter's over in Joppa, right? I mean, uh, no, Peter's over in Lydda, and it's close to Joppa. So she died, so they want to, hey, go get Peter, right? Go ahead. And the disciples had heard that Peter was there. They sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Mm -hmm. Then Peter arose and went with them. Right. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments with Dorcas made while she was with them. So they, everybody, we, this sounds just like what happened with Jesus, right? Pe they said, told Jesus, don't delay. He came. By the time he got there, the, per the girl was still dead. And so, or either it was Lazarus that was still dead, one of them. But when he got there, that, was, that happened. And so he went in there, and they all talking about old Dorcas. She made these nice coats. She did all this. She could sew. Ooh, that Dorcas. No, she could sew, boy. Right? <laughs> Keep going. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed and turning him to the body said, uh -huh. Tabitha, arise. Now, Peter did the same thing like Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Put them all forth. This sounding real equal, don't it? Yes, sir. Right? He put them all forth and told them, uh, hey, put them out the room and kneeled down and prayed, right? And said, Tabitha, arise. Go ahead. And she opened her eyes. Uh-huh. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. Okay, wait a minute now. So she done opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. At verse 41, go ahead. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. So he came back with Tabitha. She, she's alive. Like Jesus said, she's not dead but sleeping, right? That's right. Okay. But I got one question for y'all. Any of y'all ever seen Tabitha? Or Dorcas, whichever one name you want to use. Nope. You ever seen her? Nope. Ever talked to her? I never talked to this sister. Not one day. Right? So what happened to Tabitha? She died. Dead. Thank you. Dead. She died. Eventually, she died. Now, here's the thing. Everybody can trip and say, oh, man, y'all ain't raised the dead in here. Right? But evidently, when you raise the dead, what they do? They're going to die again. They die. Now, what if... They, they died right, and then you raised the dead, and then they went and sinned against God. Mm -hmm. So, because you raised the dead, you could have, they could have died right at first and then been over with. But they got up and said, I'm not saying that ever happened. What I'm saying is, raise the dead is not, can't be the greater works, right? And that can't justify if you got faith in here. Or having millionaires don't justify if we got faith in the church or not. That's right, brother. That's, what, that's the point that's being made. You being able to manifest the stuff don't justify your faith. Because look at what happened. Hey, he, he raised her from the dead. And what happened? What was the point of allowing Peter to raise her from the dead? Verse 42, go ahead. And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And many believed in the Lord. Because you get a big house, is that going to cause many to believe in the Lord? No, sir. Or maybe they're believing him for gain. Because you don't conceive something on your own lust, and now they believe in the Lord for gain. And maybe if we think like how Satan thought about Job, oh, he served God for naught? You done did everything for him? No, he found out Job served him for real, whether he get it or don't get it. That's what a servant of God is about. Whether you heal me or not, you like those Hebrew boys, right? Mm -hmm. What they say? Hey. We know our God can and will can save us, but whether he do or don't, I ain't bound down to that stature, so you can take that to the bank. Amen. Right? And this guy's the king. He said, we're not going to be careful to answer you. In other words, we ain't going to be, oh, thou king live forever. I'm going to tell you straight, partner. Bold. We ain't bound down to no statue. Now, yes, you want to talk about football, let's talk about football. <laughs> All right? <laughs> we can talk about whatever else, but this here, we ain't moving on this. That's how you got to be. That's right, brother. You instead of worrying about whether you get something or not. Let's keep going. Well, he didn't heal my mother because that's what happens to people. He didn't heal my mother, so I ain't going to, I can't serve that guy. Or uh, you look at how Satan did with Job where he made it look like everything that happened to him happened by God's hand, 
right? Fire come down from heaven. Mm -hmm. All this stuff that was miraculously done. So you could say, wasn't somebody that's missed, we had an altercation, got in a fight, and something happened to my child. No, he made it look like, so Job could not want to serve God. Mm -hmm. So people get into that when they figure out they're trying to manifest something that don't happen. Or they prayed for somebody to get healed, the person didn't get healed. Oh, well, that God must really don't exist then, huh? Okay, but let's keep going. Because, see, they've forgotten what the point was. What was the, that's why I'm breaking this down. What was the point of the Lord doing these miracles? He didn't, everybody just didn't get healed all the time. He did this. For, everybody didn't get raised from the dead all the time. Let's we'll still see Peter and them. That's right. If, uh, if one of the apostles had to be around and say, let me raise Peter back, right? They could have just kept raising each other from the dead. <laughs> why they didn't do that? And then now we're kind of seeing how absurd this stuff sounds, right? Mm -hmm. Acts 10. But the Lord was doing it for a point. The point is, hey, I'm doing this to increase my word, increase it going to save all of my people. I'm not doing it so you could show how the power that you got through me. I'm doing it for a point. If it ain't going to do that, then I ain't got no I'm not, I'm not dealing with it. Let's go. Acts 10 and 1. Ready? Mm -hmm. Acts 10 and 1. Go ahead. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, mm -hmm. a centurion of the band called the Italian band, uh -huh. a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Now, check out what's happening. This is the centurion of the Italian band. Now, we saw Jesus dealing with a centurion before, but you're going to see this. something a little different going to happen here. So this is centurion, which means what? When you're a centurion, you have an army of at least 100, right? So he is heavy in the Italian band. That's the Roman army, mm -hmm. right? The, the leading ruling class at the time, right? Mm -hmm. And he is made a big person in there. So, but he is a devout man, and he's praying to God always. Keep going. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, and mm -hmm. the angel of God coming into him, and saying unto him, Cornelius. Go ahead. And when he looked on him, he was afraid, and said, What is it, Lord? Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms have come up for a memorial before God. Now check it out. So to all the people that think Gentiles don't have a shot, right, mm -hmm. y'all read them this. How did the Lord hear him? Right? He still had to go to Israel, but the Lord heard him. That's right, brother. Right? So we just learned something on our way to learning something. So now he, his, he said, your prayers and your arms are come up before a memorial before God. Right? So the Father heard him. Right? Keep going. And now send me into Joppa mm -hmm. and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Uh -huh. He lodged with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. So you want to, I want you to go to Peter the Israelite, and he's going to tell you what you ought to do, Cornelius. Let's see what happened when Peter got there. Let's skip all the way to verse 24, right? So all this stuff happened. The Lord get Peter ready, right, telling him, hey, man, what I done cleaned up, you don't call common, right? Mm -hmm. So I know I told you don't go in the way of the Gentiles, but now it is time, right? That's right. All right, let's go to verse 24. Go ahead. And tomorrow after they entered into Caesarea, mm -hmm. and Cornelius waited for them mm -hmm. and called together his kinsmen and near friends. So he called together his what? So it wasn't just a centurion by himself then, huh? No, sir. It was his kinsmen and near friends. Now, you think a centurion in Roman army, you think he probably got other kinsmen that's got similar rank and hanging out with people. Mm -hmm. When you hang out with people that's, so you're a centurion, you're probably hanging out with other people that's centurions, that's right? right? These right. are people in your circle. So he called together his kinsmen and near friends. So now Peter is converting people in the ruling class, not just one guy. Keep going. And as Peter was coming in, mm -hmm. Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Now I know some of those Hebrews would have loved that, right? Mm -hmm. He fell down at his feet. Well, that's where you're supposed to be, Gentile, right? Let's see what Peter said. Go ahead. But Peter took him up, uh -huh. saying, stand up. Uh -huh. I myself also am a man. Uh -huh. And as he talked with them, he went in and found many that were come together. Oh, a little or just a few? Many. Many. This guy's a centurion. So Peter is converting a whole lot of Gentiles at once. Greater works than these. 
That's Jesus wasn't lying when he made the same. They're going to do greater works than you see me doing right here. They're going to do greater works. It's going to be, this gospel going to go throughout all the world because of these. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. So you got to know what the greater works are. And so you won't be still sitting here thinking that raising the dead is the greater work. Let's go 28. Go ahead. And he said unto them, mm -hmm. ye know how that is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come into one of another nation. Uh -huh. But God had showed me that I should not call any man coming or unclean. God done broke down the wall of partition. Hey, I can't call any man common or unclean. I got to show he won't. All of y'all come out of Adam. I want all y'all to come to repentance. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what he is showing them. These are greater works. They had no access to this thing. They had no, they don't, they didn't know about no sacrificial law. They didn't know how to get sin up off of them. So he letting them know, hey, now that Jesus died, you don't even have to worry about that. This is what you got to do. You come and you save yourself from this untoward generation. You start keeping these laws and commandments. Greater works, right? Let's keep going. Let's go to Acts 14. Now, this apostle that wasn't with them, he had to get taught about Jesus. He gonna, I'm going to let him tell you. I'm going to let him tell you in a few how he got taught by. But anyway, he got taught. He had to get taught directly, right? Nobody wanted to deal with this guy. Let's see. Let's check him out, right? Let's go to Acts 14 and verse 8. Acts 14 and verse 8. You ready? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, mm -hmm. impotent in his feet, mm -hmm. being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. Go ahead. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, mm -hmm. said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. So we see the, a lot of them making people do this, right? Yes, sir. So now Paul got the spirit too. So we can't say because Paul wasn't with him, he ain't got the spirit to do it, right? We just, he just shows you he even got the spirit to do it, right? Okay. So now let's skip down to verse 14. Let's see what happened, right? Which when the apostles. You know what? So I can make it clear, all right? Go up to verse 12. Okay. Mm-hmm. And they called Barnabas Jupiter mm -hmm. and Paul Mercurius mm -hmm. because he was the chief speaker. Go ahead. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands into the gates mm -hmm. and would have done sacrifice with the people. So who are they? What kind of people are these? Pagans. Right? He said they started calling Paul after they got Jupiter. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and uh, uh, called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. And he said, hey, then the priest of Jupiter came with oxen and garlands unto the gates. Right? Keep going, 14. Which when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out. Now, remember, this all happened when he healed this guy, right? Mm -hmm. And so Paul, they came and started uh, saying all this stuff, praising Jupiter and everything, and Paul and Barnabas saying, hey, when they heard of all oh, men, they rent their clothes. Let's see what happened. Verse 15, go ahead. And saying, sirs, why do ye these things? Uh -huh. We also are men of like passions with you uh -huh. and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God. Go ahead. Which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. And so he said, hey, wait, man, we got like passions just like you, but what you're doing is wrong. You don't serve this, uh, this stars and all that. You serve the one that made all this. So now Paul is converting pagans, greater works than these. These people didn't have no time for Israel and, and Israel's God. They were serving Jupiter. But now the Lord got Paul over there converting all of them. This word is going out. Look at what the Lord, look at what his b main business is get man to come back to him and be like him. That is the great work. That is the main reason for all of this, right? So now he's saying, hey, uh, which made heaven and earth and sea and all the things therein. Go ahead. Verse 16. Who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. So in time past, the Lord had just allowed, he suffered with you to walk in your own ways, right? Because some of this stuff you just didn't know. So he suffered you to walk in your own ways. Well, let's see what happened. Verse 21, go ahead. Verse 21. 20, uh, 
21. Okay. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium uh -huh. and to Antioch. So what did they do? They preached the gospel and had taught many. Verse 22, go ahead. Confirming the souls of the disciples uh -huh. and exhorting them to continue in the faith uh -huh. and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Hey, so now he even showing them how to get what? Into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So this is Paul who we saw doing miracles, right? And doing all this, right? That he's now converting others to do this. But. Something happens here. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 12. He is converting. We've seen him do miracles for others. Mm -hmm. And we saw through that miracle, he started converting people from paganism. But he did miracles for others. Let's see some 2 Corinthians 12. He's going to tell you about himself. Follow, follow this now so you pay close attention to this. 2 Corinthians 12, we're going to read 1 through 9. You ready? Mm -hmm. Let's let the Bible speak. Go ahead. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. Uh -huh. I will come I'm to... I'm sorry. Let's wait. 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 9. 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 9. You ready? Go ahead. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. Mm -hmm. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Mm -hmm. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth, such an one caught up to the third heaven. Uh, keep reading. And I knew such a man, mm -hmm. whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. So Paul is telling you how he met Christ, right? He's saying, when I saw him, I can't tell you whether he was in the body or out of the body. Not whether I was in the body or out of the body. Whether he mm -hmm. was, he just looked like the son of God, something, one that's caught up to the third heaven. Right? He had that body of light or whatever. So he said, hey, whether he was in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, but God know. So this is 14 years after he done ran into Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. So we know Paul ran into Jesus directly, right? So that's who we're talking about, the same man that healed that lame man, right? So we're not talking about nobody that don't have no faith, right? Okay, let's go. Keep going. How that he was caught up into paradise mm -hmm. and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. So it was some words that he heard that he wasn't allowed to repeat back. Just like I, those seven thunders, right? Mm -hmm. So a certain stuff the Lord didn't want repeated. So he said, hey, I can't even utter him, right? But keep going. Of such an one will I glory. Mm -hmm. Yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmity. So he said, hey, of that one I will glory. Because in myself, I will not glory, not in my, but in, in my infirmities is where I'm going to glory. And he about to tell you why. Go ahead. For though I would desire to glory, uh -huh. I shall not be a fool, mm -hmm. for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, mm -hmm. lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, mm -hmm. or that he hear it of me. So he's letting you know, and I'm sorry for doing this verse by verse, but I want to make sure it's really clear. So he's letting you know, I don't want to get above myself, big-headed. Right? Mm -hmm. Because, hey, it's, I, I've seen revelations. I've had, I done seen visions. I done seen a lot of things, right? It's a lot of stuff I know. And we could tell from his writings, it's a lot of stuff Paul brought out That's from true. the Old Testament that we wouldn't understand unless we had his writing, right? So he letting you know, man, it was a, I've seen a lot, right? He said, but I don't, but the Lord did something to me so I don't get big headed, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 7, go ahead. Unless I should be exalted above measure uh -huh. through the abundance of, rev of the revelation, uh -huh. there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, uh -uh. the messenger of Satan to buffet me, uh -huh. lest I should be exalted above measure. And, and so I could get start thinking, getting too high-minded, lest I be exalted above measure. That was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, just like how he did Job. That was a message. The Lord used Satan to do it, didn't he? He said, so it was giving me a thorn in my flesh, mm -hmm. right? And what happened? Verse 8, go ahead. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, mm -hmm. that it might depart from me. Well, oh, let's do some quick translation. Y'all know what thrice mean, right? Yeah, three times, right? So he besought the Lord three, not once, not twice, mm -hmm. but thrice, right? Mm -hmm. Three times he besought the Lord about this. Go ahead, verse 9. And he said unto me, mm -hmm. my grace is sufficient for thee, uh -huh. for my strength is made perfect in the weakness. Mm -hmm. 
Most gladly, therefore, I will rather re will, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon so me. So Paul learned something. I'd rather glory in my infirmities, right, that mm. the power of Christ may rest upon me. Because the Lord told him what? After he asked, the guy who healed and got faith asked three times, the Lord said what? No dice. My grace is sufficient for you. I didn't have to give you that. Don't none of us deserve that. So why we got to manifest all this if we don't even deserve the grace he's given us? Mm -hmm. You got to stay on the big picture. Get back on the dime. He just showed you. Said, he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. The Lord is real efficient with those words. Same thing he told Moses, wasn't he? Let the punishment suffice. Don't ask me no more. So be careful what you think you're doing. Because everybody thinking, oh, you must have faith. You didn't have faith if you asked and didn't get. Uh-uh. I, I gave you this grace. That's all you really need, that, and you really don't deserve that. So let's keep going, though. Let's keep going, though. Let's look at somebody else. Let's look at this great guy that Jesus said was great. Let's go to Luke 7. 